So suppose that our undirected graph is the friendship graph of a social network. And suppose that, so this would be all the users of the social network, edge connections correspond to friendships. Suppose we find uh, some um, set of vertices whose uh, conductance is very small. Say the conductance is less than uh, 0.01. Well, so what this means is that if we look at the average user in us, 99% of uh, his friend relationships are with other users in us. So that's probably a subset of the graph that has some uh, pretty interesting uh, structure to find out. And that is also that an interesting problem in this setting is not just to find a subset of users with a property like this, but if there are many of such sets, it's also interesting to find uh, all of them. To further specify what it means to find all of them, we would have to also say whether in the case of uh, intersecting sets, we want to find uh, uh, each of them, we want to find the union. If there are multiple intersections, if we want to find uh, the whole uh, sort of sigma algebra. But in general, let's say, suppose that there are many disjoint low conductance sets, it would be interesting to find uh, all of them or many of them. Another interesting example where a property like conductance comes up is that suppose that our graph is such that um, V is a set of uh, data items, and then that we define E so that it's the set of uh, all pairs of uh, items that are uh, similar. So what this means exactly will depend on the application. So then suppose that we find some sets of uh, items whose conductance is small. Well, that means that the elements of uh, this set are much more similar to each other than to any other element of the data set. So that might be a fairly plausible notion of uh, what is a cluster of the data in the data set. There is also a fairly conceptually different uh, way in which finding non-expanding cuts can be helpful. And this is in the design of uh, divide and conquer algorithms for some classes of graphs. To see a concrete example, suppose that we want to solve the tree coloring problem. Obviously, there will be uh, no hope to get even sub-exponential algorithm that works in uh, general graphs without making some major breakthrough on the p versus np problem. But suppose we just want some algorithm that will work, will run in uh, exponential time in the worst case, but that for some interesting classes of graphs might run quite a bit faster. So here is the idea. We have our graph, and if possible, we're going to find a balanced cut of the vertices, something where, let's say, both S and V minus S contain at least a third of the vertices, that is crossed by not too many edges. Exactly how many will determine how fast or not fast our algorithm is going to be. So then we'll make the following um, divide and conquer step. We're going to enumerate over all possible ways in which, let's call them k, um, endpoints of the edges that cross this cut might be tree-colored, um, if a global tree-coloring is possible. So we'll try all possibilities. If a global tree coloring exists, one of our enumerated possibility will be correct. So then for each choice of uh, coloring those vertices, we're going to recursively look at the problem of uh, coloring the two halves of the graphs with some hard constraint that will say, okay, so those vertices will have to be colored with certain colors, whichever we had enumerated before. So then if we can color uh, both subgraphs with three colors and with those hard constraints, then the two partial colorings can be put together into a coloring that will be valid for uh, all edges. How do we proceed in the recursive step? Well, in uh, each half of the graph, we'll try to find, if possible, a balanced cut crossed by not too many edges. And then that's how things will progress. So we will use on each part of the graph the same algorithm that we use at the other step of the recursion. So if even the 
best balance cut is crossed by a very large number of edges, then we're going to end up essentially enumerating all possible colorings already at the first step. And there is no saving over a brute force search. But let's say, as it's true for, say, bounded degree planar graphs, that at every step, we can find uh, a cut where there are only root n edges crossing. Then our total running time will be something like uh, 2 to the power of uh, root n log n, which is much better than um, 2 to the n that would come from a trivial enumeration. So for planar graphs, one can find a balanced cut. Let's say planar and uh, also bounded degree, although this is not necess necessary for planar graphs but it's necessary if we describe the approach in the way that we're doing here. So then it is known from the planar separator theorem that if we have a planar bounded degree graph, there is a balance cut, balance meaning each side has at least n over three vertices, that is crossed by order of uh, root n edges. And for planar graphs, such a cut can be found very efficiently. But now suppose that we're looking at some graph that maybe it's not planar, not even close, but still admits balance cuts crossed by a sublinear number of edges, and it also every subgraph has this property. Well then, if we can find approximately optimal balance cuts at every step, we will run in sub-exponential time. Now this is different from the problem of finding the least expanding cut in a graph, because maybe the least expanding cut will not be balanced. But there is a simple reduction that shows that if you have a good approximation for finding uh, non-expanding cuts or low conductance cuts, you can also find uh, balanced cuts like this. And so you can get some heuristic divide and conquer algorithm that will perform well on planar graphs, but also on uh, lots of other classes of graphs where this kind of uh, recursive partitioning is possible. So what kind of approximation algorithms we um, are going to see? For the problem of finding the um, cut of the graph with the least expansion, we will see an algorithm that uses spectral graph theory. That's a way of solving graph problems using linear algebra that has this kind of uh, approximation guarantee. So if the optimum is small, the algorithm will find in nearly linear time a solution whose cost is small. However, there is no constant factor or even order of log n ratio between the solution found by the algorithm and the optimum. They just this uh, essentially square root of opt approximation. Then we will see an algorithm that uses linear programming where the approximation ratio grows logarithmically with the number of vertices. And then we will see an algorithm that uses a more sophisticated kind of uh, convex relaxation and that in some way always does um, at least as well as either of those two algorithms because it contains all the information that either of those algorithms is able to access. And uh, one provable fact uh, about this relaxation is that it can lead to a square root of uh, log n approximation for the problem. And it's an open question whether there is a polynomial time algorithm achieve, or even a sub-exponential time algorithm that achieves a constant factor approximation for uh, this problem. We mentioned that another important problem to solve about e expansion is that if we have a graph where there are multiple non-expanding sets, let's say non-overlapping multiple non-expanding sets, then it would be interesting to find um, all of them. Because in a clustering problem, this would correspond to multiple clusters. In a social network, this would correspond to multiple communities, and so on. So this is a somewhat less studied uh, problem. One result that we will uh, show is achieved by spectral graph theory. And it's that if there are, in our graph, k disjoint sets, each of small expansion, then it is possible to find uh, k disjoint sets such that each of them has an expansion that is so small if the original expansion was small. So we lose a polynomial factor in the number of sets and also square root of the optimum. This should be compared to what's known in the case of finding one set where uh, here this constant is two. It's possible to do a bit better if uh, instead of trying to find as many disjoint sets as they exist, 
we are happy with finding somewhat fewer of them. So if uh, we are uh, looking to find, say, 90% times k sets, then it's possible to do that in such a way that each set will have expansion, which is at most the uh, square root of uh, what it would have been possible, times an additional loss, which is square root of log k, where k is the number of sets.